Um, good morning. Um, just to wake you guys up, uh, I'll start um, with a story about my experiences in the world of machine learning and how did I get introduced to big data. Um, it's um, nothing fancy. Uh, I shared the story last night as well at the, um, at the Hadoop user group meetup. Um, so I started um, experiencing and playing with big data when I built my first robot. And it did something um, quite different to what I do today. Um, so it used to help me fetch Snickers from the snack bar at 3 p.m. every day. And that's how I started to, in the beginning of this very stupid machine. I trained it to count steps. I was um, 20 years old at that time. And it would bring me the snack. And the next day, I trained it to, to include some sensors and do some more clever stuff. Now I do something very different. Um, much more useful, interesting stuff that we're doing with the, um, in the world of big data and banking. As Valentina said, um, what is fun about banking? We, have, we heard a few examples, but um, we've been through a very interesting journey. Banks used to be very much focused on, to a large extent they still are, very much focused on returns, results, numbers, revenues. And there were some interesting challenges that came uh, along with that. Uh, but it used to be very different. If you talk about in the context of retail banking, a few decades ago, it was very personalized, one-to-one -one relationships, getting a full view of the customer, understanding what context you are in. So you walk into a branch, they would know exactly um, who you are, and they would greet you with your name. That's how it used to be. Then we started this drive of being digital, online, mobile, and my background is mobile, so uh, I, I know how that industry really works. Um, there was very little personalization in that area, and things started to, to drift apart. So um, we really looked into going back to who we were as a bank, how we started, how we started to build this base of millions of customers who bank with us today, and what can we do now differently to go back to the same mode of understanding you for who you are, getting across all the disparate sources and systems and internal challenges, give you the kind of experiences that you get on your mobile when you're using other apps or other products and services. And that's really the crux of the challenges we are facing in the banking industry at the moment. Now, for us, it's not just about building cool products and services and experiences. Um, there are a lot of challenges that come with um, the bunch of data we are talking about. So we're talking about billions of transactions per day, multiple channels. You can, people can go into a branch. They can go into mobile, online. Um, they can phone someone up, they have a personal relationship advisor, very desperate data sources. So there is that challenge. On top of that, users experience, they expect us to, to give them real-time experiences. So if I'm using Uber, I know I call an app, it will come here, I'll call a car, it will be here right here right now. When I phone up my bank, I'm on the queue and please wait, you're on a queue and you're forever on the queue. So we really want to transform those experiences. Then there are the challenges that come with big data itself. So now we are talking about large volumes, and big, with big data come big problems. So uh, we did not hear much about it, but uh, I'll touch on it um, also later on in, in my talk. So the challenges in the world of banking are, are very different. You're expected to bring your old bulky systems up, um, create open source technologies, um, drive the organization to be more data driven, and we're using some you know, interesting UI tools to do that. Um, and at the same time, provide these real time experiences, upskill your talent. So it is quite a complex problem to solve. Now, one more example of how interesting it becomes. So to solve this problem, we hired some amazing people who we refer to as unicorns. One of them is sitting in the back. Um, Oh, hey, Sam. <laughs> so we hired these people. Now, they're solving some incredibly challenging problems. But what really happens is a data scientist comes up with an idea, picks up the phone, calls some business person, and starts saying, hey, I have this amazing idea. How I'm going to take the data, put it into Hadoop, and do some analytics on top, and do supervised learning, unsupervised learning, machine learning, build a dashboard, do stuff, send you the results. And if I'm running a product house like credit card, business, or mortgage, what is it that I'm hearing? Yeah, Hadoop, uh, yeah, two minutes, yeah, you know, 30 seconds out of two, two hours. It's, it's really not what I'm used to hearing. You have these people who are building amazing products, and they're the actual product houses who just want results. So how do we solve that problem? The answer that we found is using the data to enhance the products 
and create and run the data function in a product management manner. So now, what, what do I mean by that? This is about combining design approach, digital products, along with the insights we get from data, and launch that and run at super fast speed. So this is what I do. Um, that's a fun life. Um, I do, um, we have a very fantastic team of people who have a combination um, of data science skills, product management, Hadoop large scale engineering, and experts in the area of um, cyber and fraud, etc. So we are building um, an intelligent bank, um, and um, I'm quite uh, glad to say that we are really moving very fast in that direction about understanding customers, their behaviors, their touch points. So for example, um, overall in banking, um, it's, it's a too late kind of environment. So imagine um, some money goes into your account, maybe you're getting paid a big bonus. Um, a banker realizes, oh, a while ago, they get, so, uh, sometime later they get a report, they reach out to you, give you a phone call and say, hey, how do you want to invest? Chances are a lot has already happened by that time. So by the time they realize some money has moved in, you've decided what you want to do. And it's very much around about them and how their targets are being driven. So we're trying to turn the story around and now it's very much about the user. Rather than focusing on these certain moments, it's about the context of information. And that's powerful. I'll share some results on that as well later on. So now it's about what the user really wants, what actually, what information do they care about, what products do they want, at what time, and that's all they expect from the bank, rather than somebody sitting somewhere trying to hit a number. So I touched on um, how real time and recency matters. So I'll share one more example very quickly. I spend a lot of time in Africa these days where um, users buy airtime um, or mobile. Now, it's, it's quite a prevalent concept, and we're trying to drive digital adoption. So we're saying, hey, instead of buying um, um, your bundles on an ATM, you can do it online, uh, and you can sign up at an ATM. So I was talking to this one customer a few days ago, and he told me, I got this message about signing up, but I was so far away from the ATM. I had done the transaction a while ago. It would have been so much more convenient if you had told me right there, right now, that now I can actually sign up, and I would be a happy customer walking away. Uh, it made me think, yes, there are real challenges in that space, and I'll share how we are building some real-time scalable platforms and systems to enable our customers to get these kind of experiences. So, like I touched on, we, um, we focused a lot on, on product and getting results in you know, that 1% to 2% conversion rate kind of space that we were operating in. And when we turned around um, to a customer-centric view, where we focus on what is the information they actually really want and care about, the results were astonishing. So we got up to 20 times of conversion that we used to get before. Um, and a lot of responsiveness and engagement. And now this is where it gets fun, because now you can get, but every time the customer is talking to you, they're engaging more, it gives you more data. So more exciting stuff for you to do next with them. Um, and similar to the story we heard earlier about how, uh, how they got, uh, so the consulting firm got 30 more use cases and problems to work with banks. When we launched our first um, prototype, first example into production, we got 120 more requests. And I don't have too many people. So I'll share what we're doing in that space also. Now, what are we doing beyond just retail customers? So we're using this information also for our smaller businesses. And these are the guys who don't have the most sophisticated CRM systems all the time. Occasionally, they would even tell you, oh, you want to talk to me about um, special CRM systems? Currently, I use a paper register. So how can you make the experience better for those guys? And that's where the challenges are quite extreme, because if these guys, who, so one person who's running a cafe has another guy, there are two people running an entire cafe at rush hours, they don't have time to use fancy dashboards or interesting user interfaces and spend gr uh, time understanding graphs and charts. So the data products they care about is give me the most important three insights that are going to make my life easy, three most important next best actions I can implement today to make a change and grow my business. And those challenges are very hard because if you get it wrong once or twice, they're not going to come back to your platform. So we've got some great results in that space, which is very much around helping our smaller um, business segment 
clients understand how to improve their businesses. So it would be information such as understanding the footfall, and we heard about a lot of interesting information that the mobile operators have, but understanding footfall and telling them, hey, if you open between these hours, this hour, and that hour, you're actually going to drive more uptake and attract certain kind of customers. So corporates um, as well, so there's a lot of information available about them uh, and how their customers are interacting. Um, similar information to what we just heard in the previous case study, guys. Uh, um, who are your customers? Are they digital? Are they non-digital? Online, offline? What do they like? Where do they live? What do they do? Uh, very powerful information, not just for Barclays to build products, but for, for us to help others within our wider ecosystem create more user-centric products as well. Um, and then the startups. So we, are, we assume we're doing great by running at 20x and they are running at 1000x uh, speed. Uh, and they're doing a lot of exciting stuff. So we are partnering up a lot with them in the open source space and um, collaborations via APIs. Um, so I'll share one more example. So yesterday I was talking to a colleague of mine, George. He told us a story that um, he, he, was, uh, he was getting a few drinks. He was watching a game with a friend. And he made a payment to pay back for, um, for a drink. And he used this app called Pingit, um, which was the first product I launched. So I was very proud. Somebody's still using it. Um, so he used this product, Pingit, and paid his friend with his Twitter handle attached a picture to the payment about the moment, which was um, the game they were watching. And now, if you look at it, the, con the concept and the experience of banking has changed. What used to be a transaction from person A to person B and a line of record in one database system is so much more than that. Now you're capturing information about the context, the behavior, lifestyle choices, social networks, moments, preferences. So it makes life a lot more interesting because now we're, uh, we have a lot of information about the behaviors and the context. And the way segmentation used to happen, so if you look at the slide, you will see three characters. Two on the left have very similar demographic profiles, but the, um, the, other, the two on the right have a lot of similarities in their lifestyles and preferences. So now the way you look at customers is very different. You, it's harder to box them into age range and segment and population and where they live, but it's very much around what do they do? What do they like? Now, social data is, um, is quite interesting. Um, in case you're wondering what it means, is the kind of stuff people post on social media. So we were given the task of um, going to uh, go out and figure out what, what it actually means. So we started looking at the problem areas. Currently, the way banks capture feedback and a lot of organizations is through surveys and um, you get a text message, how likely are you to recommend um, our service to your friends and colleagues? And you would get some number off the back of it. Sometimes the response rate is very, very low. So we're changing that and becoming more real time in the way we capture feedback on our customers. What are they saying? Building it back into the products. If you go to the app stores, you get huge amounts of feedback from users on what features they want. If they have issues with service complaints, social media is one of the first channels where we, um, we get this information from. Uh, and in certain markets, um, users tell us where the challenges are. So if there are any outages and there are issues around um, security or ATMs not working, um, our customers are very active partners in us enabling um, better products for them and improving our services as well. Now, um, what kind of challenges do we have with our data? So the data sources are very different and various kinds of problems we have in that space. So different kind of data sets. Our data scientists are spending a lot of time trying to bring it all together. And then the problems we are solving are also quite different. So we have um, challenges in the area of cybersecurity, fraud, financial crime, marketing, and creating relevant products, and credit risk modeling, et cetera. All of this needs to happen in real time at big data scale with millions of customers and billions of transactions as we spoke about. And now the latency is very, very low. So for us to deal with these challenges we're working on, the ideal way would be to have all the data in one happy place and do lots of interesting analytics on top of that um, and create real-time products and services. But with this come um, some challenges as well. Um, so I'll very quickly touch on what is happening here with one example. So there's real-time information coming in. We have been talking about real-time a lot today. Um, so customers want to do a lot of stuff real-time. They want to see actions. What about the context and history of who they are 
And the challenges come in when you want to deploy thousands of models in cyber, in fraud, in marketing, et cetera, and everything, all the beautiful products we spoke about. So you want that to happen very, very quickly. At the same time, you want to understand who these people are. So I'll give the classic example of me going on holiday uh, by the beach, ordering a cocktail. I really want that cocktail. I put my card into the card machine and it gets blocked because I'm in an unknown location. Now, what the system is doing is looking at real time, making a decision, unknown location, suspicious transaction block. But in reality, I go to the same place every year at the same time of the year. So I expect this information to be fed in. Now, if we're using a lot of interesting open source technologies in that space for combining the real time information with context of the customer and driving next best action right here, right now. Um, one more challenge to, to highlight um, what happens here is now think about um, a large organization that has hundreds of products and each one of those is trying to do something similar. So credit card business and mortgages and investment bank and corporate bank and different geographies like Africa all are trying to build these models and target the customer. And as a user, what happens historically, I'm bombarded with similar products from all sorts of directions. Um, but when you put um, data and deal with it in the right way, you build the right product-based mindset, customer-centric view around that, then a lot of those challenges are mitigated. Um, so I'll skip through the fraud section, uh, and I touched on open source as well, because Valentina is giving you the two minute timer and people are very hungry. Um, so I'll talk about one of my favorite topics very quickly. So I run a millennial team, um, and yesterday you saw a lot of us <laughs> um, when we came to the Hadoop user group meetup. Um, and these are the people who are there to, not just for the money, but for passion and to build cool things. Um, and uh, so I'm 27. I use Snapchat and all those kinds of things. And I'm so used to doing, doing things in real time. And so does the rest of my team. Um, they're very used to not having to spend 70, 80% of their time cleaning up the data, putting it in one place, quite impatient. Um, so we're doing a lot of exciting work in that space to automate the information and cleanse it in the right way. Um, and avoiding situations where our customers are in some cases two, 300 years old in the system for some reason. So there's a lot of exciting stuff happening in that space. And also, um, I just want to leave you with one thought um, and one story. So I teach programming to kids in my spare time. And a few months ago, I was working with this one girl who's um, nine years old. And she was building um, an app. She was trying to convince her mom to get her a dog. And the mom would say, well, yeah, you wouldn't look after it. I don't trust you. Um, the kid built this gamified app where she would get points every time she would feed the dog or take the dog for a walk, um, et cetera. And I just wanted to get some views from you. How long do you think it took her to, to build that, that app? Any guesses? Quite close, three hours. <laughs> so, and it made me think, wow, there is a kid, nine years old, in three hours can build a product, build an app, download it on her phone, show it around to her parents to convince them that now I can you know, get a talk. Um, whereas in a lot of times in our large organizations or, or elsewhere, we're spending a lot of time, just two hours, three hours is what you might even end up spending in a meeting strategizing about stuff. So it's, um, it's very much about the execution and how do you, built the right uh, teams, have the right mindset and the mission of transforming experiences for your customers using the right technology, and that will lead to happy big data for you. Thank you. Okay, cool. Questions? Yes. You have this millennial team looking at things to be done now. <coughs> Whereas you have the bank, which is um, quite, uh, if you look at the banker, they have been doing things like I, I want it next week. So, how do you um, mix and match the sort of requirements? Yeah, so great question. Um, so, we're building, uh, so we follow a lot of interesting regimented frameworks. So we will build um, products in an MVP kind of approach. So 
um, Pingit, which was a product I launched previously, uh, that's a great example where you um, define what's the most important feature, minimal viable product that the consumer is going to get most amount of value from. There's a huge mind shift because not everybody's used to it. You know, traditional ID programs run for years. Now you're talking about, I want to launch something in 60 days max from scratch. Um, and it, it actually stretches the thinking in a very different way. But um, they're starting to see the results as well. And when you include customer a lot more in defining and shaping the roadmap of the product and you, you include their feedback, and with big data, now we can do it at scale, um, it becomes um, an easier conversation to have. Cool. Any more questions? Yes. Yeah, so it is complex in a lot of cases, but we have, because uh, there might be many factors that are um, contributing to it. So there are a lot of interesting ways so we can do A-B kind of segmentation, multivariate testing as well to see the impact. Um, and it very much depends on the use case or the problem you're solving. But, um, in, and some of the challenges we have is in a lot of cases, uh, it's not even historically measured, so you wouldn't even know what it used to be like, so what your conversion rate used to be. So whereas in some cases we're a lot more um, advanced, so we embed the methodology of, of capturing the feedback right at the beginning of any new initiative in the big data team now. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah.